Hey everybody, my name is Jason, also known as Pirate JC, and welcome to another Babylon video. This is part three of our Hex Tile Demo video series. And if you don't remember what it is that we're creating, it is this awesome Hex Tile Grid where I can click and get a 50% chance of generating procedural island noise based terrain right inside of Babylon running at 60 frames per second. We're going to pick up in this video right where we left off. And today we're going to be building out our hex grid. Now, I'm not going to lie, some of the math in this is going to be a little bit complicated. So just bear with me as I do the best that I can to explain it. And all of the hex grid math, I have to give credit to shout out to this hexagonal grids article by uh, Red Blob Game. So you'll find a link down to, uh, in, to this article down in the description for this video down below. Uh, but definitely check this out because there's a lot of math that I used here to be able to create and figure out how to create procedurally this uh, this grid based on the size that I want. Okay, so here's what we're going to go do. The first thing that we're looking for is right underneath the uh, load in that we're doing for our asset container, where we load the asset container into the scene. I'm going to set up a few parameters. Okay, now these parameters are what we're going to use to create the hex grid. The first is the size of the grid. Now the size is relative to the center. So if you look at center out, that's what it means by grid size. So if I say I have a grid size of two, that means one in the center and two on the outside, okay? Uh, that's what that means. So if I do three here and hit play, then it's going to be one, two, three to the outside, okay? So that's basically what that means, uh, what this variable is for. Uh, the next one is the length of each hex. Now I created this in Blender, these hex, uh, tiles to have a, let's call it a radius, because I used a, a basically a cylinder, a radius, which is a point, any point on the hexagon to the center of that hexagon is a unit value of one. Okay. And then the math to figure out the distance, the width distance of a hexagon, that's from a side to a side is the square root of three times the hex length. And then to figure out the, the height, which is point to a point, it's just two times the hex length. And then this row length addition is a variable that we're going to update based on creating our grid. So it's not something that you should uh, mess around or, or play with. Essentially what that does is we're going to go through and create rows. We're going to go through row by row. And this will tell us, does this particular row need an extra hexagon or not? That's what keeps track of that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically call this function that says create hex grid. We'll pass in the grid size that we want, the hex distance, Oh, again, which is the, the measurement from side to side of a hexagon, the hex height distance, which is from point to point of a hexagon, uh, the row length addition, which again, you shouldn't mess with for now. Uh, and then the hex tile import, that's the actual asset container for the hex tile. And then I'm going to pass in the camera and uh, the scene. Okay, so then we're going to scroll down and we have a new function. Now this new function is create hex grid. It takes in all those parameters that we just talked about. And here's where we start in with the math. So we're going to do first go through the grid math. And then there's a couple of other things that we're doing in here just to kind of organize things well for ourselves that we'll talk about in a second. So first and foremost is I'm going to create a starting point. Where should my first hexagon be located? And Basically, what I want to do is I want to create it in the zero position. Remember, we're going to operate by rows. So we're going to go this row, then this row, then this row, so forth and so on. I want to start in the first position, which is first position is going to be right here. So the math to do that is to take the hex width distance. So we're going to create a new, a new vector three. Okay. And it's X position is going to be this. This is the X position. Sorry, right here. It's going to be the hex width distance. Remember that's side to side divided by two multiplied by the grid size minus one. Okay, and our grid size in this case starting out is two. So we're going to be multiplying that by two minus one, which is one. We're going to have zero in Y because we don't want this to be high up. We're just placing it horizontally. And then the Z uh, location for this vector three is going to be uh, the negative of the hex height distance multiplied by 0.75. And again, I know this is a lot of math we're going over. Please read that hexagonal grids article by Red Blob Games. It's awesome and super, super helpful. And then that again is going to be multiplied by grid size minus one. So that gives us our starting location, which essentially is the center point of this top uh, left 
uh, point of our of our hex grid. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to loop through rows. So I is going to represent our row. So uh, the I of zero is this row. I of one is this row. I of two is this row. Okay, and we're going to say loop through uh, I for grid size, which is two, multiplied by two. So that gives us four minus one. So that gets us back to three. So now we have three. Uh, rows, and that is going to scale up appropriately as you add more uh, grids. Okay, so we're going to loop through row by row, and then in looping through row by row, we need to know to draw hex tiles one after another until we've reached a certain point. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing is we're going to say, okay, I'm going to instantiate all of the models into the scene. Now we covered this in our first video, but that's taking the asset container, making a copy of what's in the asset container and putting it into the scene, including the animation groups. Then I'm going to get the root node, okay? The root node of all of the assets that have been returned. In this case, there's only one, so I just grabbed the first one. And I'm going to say the name of that root node is going to be hex tile I plus Y. So it's going to get the row, and then for lack of a better word, the column, the row, and then the specific hex in that row is going to be attached to the name. And then I'm going to say hex tile dot position, copy from grid start. So remember, we kept track of our get grid start, and we're going to be updating this for each row. But what we're, I'm going to do is I'm going to say this particular hex tile, copy the uh, vector three from grid start. Okay, and that's going to be its starting location. So now I move it to right here. So then I'm going to say the hex tile root dot x position. Okay, so its horizontal movement this way is going to, I'm going to subtract the hex width distance multiplied by y. So I'm basically going to move it over for however many I need. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. How do I know how many I need in any given row? Well, it is basically the grid size plus this row length addition that I'm going to keep track of. So I know that in a grid size of two, remember two being out from the center, so one, two, I know that the top row needs two hexagons. Uh, and so in this case, I uh, basically don't have a row length addition, which is why it's set to zero up above. And so we're going to loop through and I know I need two of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the instance number, in this case y, so the first time through it's set to zero, I'm going to say copy my location and put it at grid start. Okay. Then I'm going to say move it over, subtract it, because in Babylon we're left-handed. So we're going to move it over and we're going to say how far do we move it over? Well, we move it over a full hex width distance, but we're going to multiply how far that needs to go over, how many of those hex width, dis width distances based on which hex tile we're at in any given row. Okay, I know that's a lot. But basically what that means is this. The first time through, I give it its starting location, and I'm going to move it over by the distance times zero. I'm not going to move it over, so it's not going to move an x. Because remember that the first time through this loop, y is set to zero. The next time through this loop, y is now set to one. So now I'm going to say, move it over a full hex width distance multiplied by one. So poop, and we pop over and we've got the next one. If that were to continue, and you'll see that in the next row, we'd multiply it by two and I'd move it over two hex width distances. Okay, so that gets us through our first row, basically. But now we have to keep track of, should the next row have an, have an addition or a subtraction based on the number of uh, how many we're keeping track of in the row, which essentially I'm doing with the row length addition. And so I do that by saying, okay, is my current row greater than or equal to the grid size minus one? Okay, so my grid size is two. And in this case, I uh, am gonna subtract one, so I'm gonna say one. So is, is I, is my row number greater than or equal to one. And in this first case, it's not because the first row is actually zero, right? So I'm actually going to skip that check and go to else. In this else check, I'm going to say, okay, let's add row length addition is going to be, we're going to add one to row length addition. And then we're going to set a new grid start X and Z position. And the way I'm going to do that again is by looking at the math. I want to come down half of the hex width 
uh, excuse me, over half of the x width distance. Okay, so I'm moving over basically to here. And then I want to come down the hex height dis distance multiplied by 0.75. And that gets me right to the center there. So that now is my new grid start location. Now let's loop back through and see what happens. Okay, so now in my new row, I'm going to go through and say, okay, the length of times I'm going to loop through is the grid size two plus one. So now this row actually has three hexagons that it's going to drive. And remember, we're going to go through same exact thing. I'm going to rename the parent. I'm going to copy from the grid start. And then I'm going to move it over by the distance multiplied by which hex we're at in that particular loop. And so in this second row, I get to uh, three. I need the hex, uh, the grid size two plus one. That's my row length addition because we added one when we came up. And then what, so now I know I need three. So then after three, watch this. If the row that I'm on is greater than or equal to grid size minus one. Okay, so remember in this case, grid size is two, minus one is one. Yes, I am in row one, which is greater than or equal to uh, uh, grid, uh, one, grid size two minus one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to subtract a number from row length addition. So now row length addition was at three. I'm going to subtract when it's now back at two. I now move differently. I'm going to subtract the width distance. So it's going to go over this way and then down. Okay. Because remember Babylon is left-handed. Okay. So uh, I'm going to move it over by half of the hex width distance. That's back over to this point here. And then I'm going to move it down by the hex height distance multiplied by 0.75, which gets me back here. And then we loop through. So that's it, that's the hex math. And then of course, this is the last one because as we established here, the only, we're gonna keep looping through and creating rows up until we have the grid size times two. So in this case, four minus one, that's three. So this will be the uh, third, uh, um, the third row. And so we're gonna be basically be done at this point. Okay. So that is it. That's how we create our hex grid. Uh, now we're going to do a couple of extra small things uh, in here to clean up. I love to make sure that we're cleaning up and tidying up, especially sloppy names. Now, Babylon does a lot of stuff to when you create a clone or you instantiate an asset container into the scene, it will actually name uh, things clone for you. I just want to clean that up a little bit. So the first thing that I'm going to do, oh, by the way, let me show you this real quick. Uh, in this uh, hierarchy, you will see that I have the name that I mentioned. That I, it's going to be hex tile plus its uh, row number plus its hex tile number in that row. And so the first hex is zero, zero. That's here. That's row zero instance zero of the hexes in that row. The next one is going to be zero, row zero, hex number one, so forth and so on. So then we move up to one, zero, one, 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 two, so forth and so on. So that's just kind of how I'm naming that. And then uh, underneath that... Look at this. It's a little sloppy. It says clone of hex tile, clone of border. And then we get that over and over and over again. I just don't like that. I want to clean that up. Uh, and oh, by the way, also, since we're looking at this in animation groups, notice that I also have the same exact name for every animation group. Okay, so we want to clean some of that up. So here's what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment this, which says, okay, let's get all of the descendants of the hex tile root. Remember the hex tile root is as I instantiate the asset containers uh, contents into the scene, I'm going to get the root node. Then I'm going to say, give me all of the children of that root node. Okay. In this case, the root node is this top one here uh, that I've renamed to hex tile row plus uh, instance in that row of the hex. So I'm going to get the result of this get descendants is actually this sub root node plus all of the meshes. So I'm going to get them all and then I'm going to loop through them and I'm going to do this. I'm just going to lop off entirely clone of. That's it. Nice and simple. I'm going to say this particular descendant of the root, its name is now going to be equal to its name and I'm going to slice off basically nine uh nine units in that string, let's call it, uh, nine characters, thank you. Uh, that's the word I was looking for. And then basically we're gonna get back down to border, bottom, terrain, top, or hex tile. So I'm just cutting off the uh, clone of basically. And then I'm gonna say, if the name of this asset happens to be terrain, I'm gonna set its visibility to zero because I don't want the terrain to be seen through any of the waves that I put on the top. I just wanna basically, remember the sandwich of top, 
bottom and then the terrain hex is in the middle of each of these hex tiles, I'm going to just turn off the visibility of that uh, terrain. Okay, so that cleans up the naming. When I do this, this will clean up the naming of the uh, hex tiles. So now they're nice and clean. But I still have pretty messy animation group names, right? This is not as pretty. So let's actually do that. Let's update those so that every animation group is named something appropriately uh, that makes sense to us relative to the particular instance we're in. So that is going to be these two right here. What I'm doing is I'm saying, OK, give me all of the animation groups associated with the hex tile. Remember, the hex tile is the variable of the imported or instantiated uh, asset containers into the scene. So give me all the animation groups. And then I'm going to say, which in this case, basically, I'm sorry, no, don't give me all of them. Give me the first one because there only is one. That's what I'm calling here. And then I'm going to say, hey, give its name anim group plus the hex tile root dot name. So hex tile root I've named to hex tile and then its position in the hex grid. I'm going to say anim group is going to be plus that name. And so then after we do that, we end up with this really, really nice uh, looking naming convention that we can keep track of. And I can look right there and know exactly which animation group visually applies to which hex in this grid. OK, just a couple of tiny last little things that we're going to do to clean up. Uh, this is me tinkering around and finding that as I expand the grid size, I want the camera to back up so that it kind of always snaps to something that um, looks really, really pleasing so that we kind of have it. So I don't end up with a huge grid that goes out of the camera for us to. And so I basically just sort of came up with this to say, OK, this is the right math to basically allow me to uh, how far I should be out from the hex grid. So uh, let me show you that real quick. Um, that basically sets the camera automatically. If I go in and I quickly update the grid size to be four, um, now what I'm going to do is it pops the camera back out. Watch what happens if I don't have this on. Uh, watch what happens when I'll hit play and you end up with the camera is basically not backing up. And so I want the camera to back up appropriately to give nice buffer around um, around the heck the entire hex grid, no matter how big it becomes. And so that's the math that I figured out to do that. And it worked pretty well. That was me just kind of tinkering with some numbers and trying some things out. And I kind of liked the result. OK, last thing we're going to do here is we just want to make sure that all animation groups in the scene after we've created this hex grid are completely reset back to zero. Just a little bit of housekeeping that I like to do to make sure that uh, every animation is, is at zero. It's ready to start, ready to play right away for me. And so I'm going to get all the animation groups in the scene, loop through them, and then say anim groups, and then that particular instant reset. And that's basically it. And so now what I have after all of this is said and done is I have a hex grid. Any one of these hex grids I can uh, hexes I can click on, and I have a 50-50 chance of generating that uh, alert message saying, hey, you found an island. And so I can go through, not an island, not an island, found an island. And so basically what we're doing is just running that. Oh, and by the way, remember, I'm also shutting them off so that the ones I've already picked can't be picked again. So that's it. That's the complex math behind creating the hex grid, how I'm going through row by row, how I'm tracking it, moving it over. It's possible that there are uh, different ways, maybe even more efficient ways of doing that. But that's the one that I came up with that worked pretty, pretty well. And basically, that's the hex math. And again, please reference that hexagonal grid article from Red Blob, Blob Games. They've done an awesome, masterful job of making it super, super clear about the math involved. So there's a lot in there. Please, please check it out. Thank you so much for checking out this uh, part of our video series on creating the hex tile grids. I hope you've gotten something out of it. And I hope you continue to come along on the journey for us as I continue to, to take us through the different parts of this series. If you have not already had a chance to do so, please consider subscribing to this channel so that you don't miss any future updates and future videos. And thank you so much for joining us. We'll catch you next time.